this young man, high school, honor student, grew up in a well-adjusted family, well-balanced family, teenager, hormones raging, just as all teenage hormones rage. And so gets caught up in a bit of passion and decides to have sex. The issue is that he doesn't have unprotected sex and having unprotected sex is just like rolling the dice concerning whether you're gonna contract HIV and AIDS. So I'm gonna have this brother, we've marked some coins here to determine, you know, or to demonstrate how random sometimes this disease is concerning contraction. So this brother's had unprotected sex this one time. Roll the dice, brother. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right. What we got over there, brother? Bring that. <laughs> All right, now this brother rolled it. Was it going to look like this or was it the other way down? We got it. This brother rolled the dice, amen, and he did not contract HIV AIDS. Well, he had unprotected sex, but thank God he did not contract. This sister. Good sister, happy sister, likes to enjoy life, responsible sister, in a relationship, in a loving relationship, in a monogamous relationship, in a relationship that she thinks is safe. She hasn't realized that her significant other has had sex and did not use protection and she has had sex with him several times. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. Here it is, one, two out of the three coins turns up that she's contracted HIV. My brother. <laughs> My brother has been abstinent for three years now. Hasn't had any sexual contact for three years now, but neither has he had an HIV test either. Let's just see. I mean, it's been three years. Let's just see what happens. Roll the dice, brother. And out of the three potential, one has turned up. And even though it was three years ago, and he hasn't had sex in three years, sometime when he had sex prior to these last three years, he had it with someone that was HIV positive. And he's been HIV positive for at least that long and hasn't known it. My sister here is a saved woman. Bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> Grew up in the church, hallelujah, fixture, amen, in worship. And she gets married, hallelujah, to this brother that's been preaching now for about two years. The brother's on fire for the Lord, amen. His bishop has promised he's gonna give him a church, amen. And, and now that they're in a loving, monogamous, marital relationship, but she just didn't realize that prior to them being married, that uh, he had had a blood transfusion several years ago. And from that drug, from that transfusion, he contracted HIV. The problem is he hasn't let 
his wife know that he's HIV positive and she's been in a relationship with him for two years. What happens? Two, no, three out of the three shows up. That this sister been in a loving relationship, married relationship with this man she loves for two years. Someone that has HIV and hasn't told her. My sister here. For whatever reason, she started doing drugs when she was a teenager. She hasn't done drugs for at least the last three, four years. She's been clean. But the drugs she was doing, when she was doing drugs, she was doing intravenously, meaning she was using a needle. And there were a couple of times that she shared needles with someone else. Let's see what possibly could happen. Now she rolled and none showed up. What am I trying to demonstrate here? Because you have sex with someone that has HIV and AIDS does not necessarily mean that you will 100% for sure contract the disease, but it's probable. And the more times you have sex, unprotected sex, with anyone that is HIV positive, the greater your chances come or become concerning being HIV positive oneself. So the first thing that I'm advocating as a pastor at Swope Park is number one, that abstinence, abstinence rather, is the only sure proof way of protecting one's health status. Not having sex at all is the only way we can say 100% that we will not contract any type of disease. But now we're human. And most humans like to have sex, and most humans are going to have sex. And since that's already a reality of life, then the second thing that I'm advocating is that we would protect ourselves and we would be responsible. We already know that the HIV AIDS virus exists. We know that we will contract it probably if we have unprotected sex. So the second thing is to protect ourselves. And then the third thing is education. We've got to educate ourselves concerning this reality, and then we've got to educate others. The bottom line where I'm going with all of this, if we don't take some time in our own lives and in the lives of our community and do this type of teaching and point these type of things out, we're going to continue to get person after person contracting HIV and not even know it, going to spread it to somebody else, they're going to spread it to somebody else, and before you know it, it might be here in Kansas City where three out of four people. So I'm praying number one, in the name of Jesus, that we see this as a human reality and that we be involved in loving and compassionate ways concerning this reality, that we protect ourselves, we educate ourselves, and we be the loving presence of God concerning this reality. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let's give our volunteers a cheer here. Amen. Thank you all.